It is therefore under no circumstances to be entered into without holy advice or lightly but reverently, soberly, advisedly, and in the fear of God. Is there anyone present that sees any reason why these two should not be joined together in holy matrimony, speak now, or forever hold your peace. And because there is no one, <laughs> and God said, it's not good that man should be alone. I'll make a help meet for him. And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And the Lord took one of Adam's ribs and made flesh. And he took that rib, closed it up, and brought forth a woman unto the man and he said this is now bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one one flesh so we have come to know and believe the love that God has for us God is love and whoever abides in God God abides in them by this is love perfected within us so that we may have confidence on our final day. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Fear has to do with punishment and consequences and whoever fears has not been perfected in love. We love because God first loved us. And so husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. Likewise, wives, love your husbands. From this time forward, and you can look at her for this one. <laughs> do you take this woman to be your lawful and wedded wife? And do you earnestly promise before God and these witnesses that you will love her, comfort her, honor and keep her in sickness and in health, and that forsaking all others for her alone, you will perform unto her all of the respect that a husband owes to his wife, until God by death shall separate you. If so, say, I will. I will. It's awesome. From this time forward, do you take this man to be your lawful and wedded husband? And do you earnestly promise before God and these witnesses that you will love him, comfort him, honor and obey him in sickness and in health, and that forsaking all others for him alone, you will perform unto him all the respect that a wife owes to her husband until God by death shall separate you. If so, say, I will. Awesome. See how loud and powerful she was there. <laughs> May I have the rings? Thank you. Wedding rings capture the full range of the ceremonial, symbolic, and communal aspects of marriage and preserve these many levels of significance as a durable and constant reminder. Ancient yet contemporary, steeped in lore and mystery, yet almost universally exchanged. Wedding rings combine the art of the jeweler, the reverence of the betrothed, and the beauty of love and partnership in a single resonant symbol. Rings have been exchanged as a symbol of the bond of marriage for so long and in so many different cultures that the origin of the practice is obscure, but the representation is, even at its most diminished stage, authentic. Certainly the circle of a ring represents undying love and the continually renewed vows of the married couple. Circles have long been archetypes for not only timelessness, but also wholeness and homecoming. Mm 